as the uncertainty of our times become maybe looming over us, I'd like to maybe share some encouraging thoughts as well as some aspects of directing uh, what we're looking towards doing officially as Grace Baptist. There are going to be things that will be much different, yet I would like to be able to remind us all of some fundamental truths. First of all, our position. Our position before God has not changed. Our purpose to be able to make Christ known, to be able to be a disciple of Christ and make disciples has not changed. Now as we look towards what it may look like as far as church service and different activities in the next few weeks and months, our position is guaranteed to be able to be the same, but our practice will necessitate change. And I would like to be able to look towards some of these practices that we're looking towards have been in discussion quite a while with leadership as far as the best way to be able to encourage one another, to be able to reach out. And so I would like to be able to show that uh, through the next few or last few weeks, been trying to monitor through the CDC, try to be able to look through the Minnesota Health Department as well as some different aspects coming from Mayo to be able to determine what is the best route that we can be able to follow. Um, from looking for these guidelines, our government has asked, at least at this time, that groups of 50 or larger um, aren't able to or would not meet. Uh, I can see from Romans chapter 13, we have a phenomenal privilege to live out the principle of what God calls us to in Romans chapter 13 of submitting to our government if they do not ask us to do something that would be unbiblical or immoral. I believe this is a way we could live out and be a good testimony, as well as secondly, to have an opportunity to show love, especially to those that may be at a higher risk uh, of infection. So because of these principles, it's been decided that this coming Sunday, March 22nd, we're going to be postponing our morning service. And as we look towards what that looks like, uh, in our staff meeting this morning, Pastor Devlin, and Cheryl and I were looking towards what it would look like. We took our calendars, uh, we ripped them up, and then tried to be able to figure out what is it that we can do to be able to put in place principles, our practice, so we can live out the principles of what happens on a Sunday morning. So the question may be asked more simply would be, why do we come to church? And on a Sunday morning, I would submit, we have several dynamics, we have prayer, we have worship, we have fellowship, encouragement, communion, giving, Bible instruction, and aspects of service. So as we transition and are looking towards fulfilling all these aspects of worship, I would ask you to personally set aside some individual time. Some individual time to be able to pray, to be able to worship the Lord, and whether that looks like maybe times of song with your family or maybe just between you and the Lord. Secondly, I'm working with an audio and visual team, both from our church as well as the Burmese church, to be able to send out biblical instruction in, an, in a visual and audio format. Uh, I would ask you to be able to check your emails, maybe for consistent updates, as well as different online formats, whether it's gbcmn.com, which is our website, or Facebook, and other different forms of communication. But connected to that, we're looking at developing an online ability to be able to give. So you could be able to give online, whether it be through a debit or credit card. It would be safe, it would be secure and simple very similar to maybe uh, other aspects that you've already given, whether it be Amazon or other ways to be able to order. Uh, if you're not comfortable with that, we are also working with the finance team to be able to give and process checks, whether they're dropped off here physically or whether they're handed in through the mail. Uh, another component that'll be more difficult to be able to actually um, live out, but one that I'm actually most excited about to see what the transition may bring and that is relationship and encouragement. One of the problems that can oftentimes happen in a Sunday morning service is we can become spectators, where we come to worship and everything is done for us, but we're not required to have to necessarily be able to be forced out of our comfort zone. I would submit that in God's sovereign hand, the coronavirus has forced us to challenge some of our paradigms to ask ourselves some questions. Are we serving and encouraging and building relationships? 
And at this moment, even though there's aspects of technology that make relational building difficult, technology can also be able to allow us to, whether it's connecting through someone with a phone call, whether there's still the ability to be able to meet together, we can systematically be able to encourage those who come and have participated in worship. Connected to that, one of our plans to assist the process of meeting spiritual needs and encouragement is the pastors and deacons are working through uh, looking towards different care groups that we can be able to have where everyone is going to be looked after specifically uh, by different leadership of the church connected, whether it's through phone calls and different emails and other ways we can connect if the ability is still there, maybe personal visits or even being able to help assist in physical means. Uh, that we're working towards that to be able to make sure every member is taken care of. And we have the opportunity to be able to live out Acts chapter 2, where the Bible talks about they had all things in common. They surrounded themselves by the Word of God and prayer and acts of service and encouragement. And then after that, they had the ability in Acts chapter 6 to be able to meet each other's needs in a specific way so we get in a way to be able to be thrown back to the original structure of the way it may have looked when right after Pentecost and the church was able to be able to grow and impact the world. There would be an aspect that I would also be able to challenge you to remember that as maybe we're meeting with technology and it seems a little bit odd, we have the fantastic opportunity to be able to live out what God has called us to do in our world and be able to still worship our Savior as our position and our purpose has not changed. Just our practice might look a little different. Thank you very much, and I look forward to being able to connect as the weeks and days continue. Thank you.